Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. This is Lamp Working 101.36, and I'm glad to have you guys here today. This demo is coming from one of our subscribers, Enrico. Welcome back. I'm so glad to uh, be able to make something else for you, and hopefully everybody can get something out of this because it's a it's a square bead, and that's what we're going to be making today. We'll make a tabular, a flat square bead. A lot of people like to use a bead press to make square beads that are all exactly the same. But you don't have to use the bead press at all to make a square bead. Even if you want them to be the same size and shape every time, you just have to count the n number of wraps that you're putting on it. Without any bead presses, I am going to show you how I approach making a square bead. Yeah, square beads. All I know is that this is going to be square. I don't know anything else about how it's going to look, so I gotta think about this for a moment while I dig through my goodies and come up with an interesting pattern. And of course, for everybody out there who is new to the channel, do know that I really enjoy making things that you want to see. Sometimes I'll, I'll struggle and go, oh my God, what am I going to make? What am I going to make? I don't mind a little bit of struggle. Actually, I really hate the struggle. So if any of you guys have anything that you would like to see that I haven't made yet, please let me know. I would totally love to oblige for all of you out there who are subscribing to Scottwood Research. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you next time in the dungeon. Oh, square beads are so much fun, you guys, and really actually easy to make. And I've been thinking I'm going to make this a one inch by one inch, and I'm just going to eyeball it. So that to me looks like about an inch rolled out. And then I'm going to add another set here of wraps of my base color. It will be white. It is white. White uh, number 204, Ephetri. The only white I use. Because I love it so much. So I'm just shaping this up to be a barrel shape bead. But I don't want it to exceed the length of the one inch size that I'm going for. Now here's where I start to shape it up. We're gently going to press it down a little at a time. I, if it gets too wide, then I'm in trouble. I've pressed too much. This looks good to me. So what I need to do now is start to add to the sides. I wanna add a little bit more to each side. Do one side at a time as you go so you're not exceeding that square inch by, you know, that inch by inch. And now this is where I'm going to be heating the sides up and I do a lot of use with the graphite paddle, pressing down the tops, the bottoms, just squaring everything up. And then what I'm gonna do finally before I add everything to it is put my corners on. You want to put your corners on at the end separate and see how I use the edge. You can use the edge of any you know, graphite, marver, or whatever, but um, I'm pulling that edge in to create a nice crisp line at the bottom. So basically that's your uh, square bead. But, you know, we got to add a little bit of life to it. It's just white. That's boring. Let's make it uh, a little bit more colorful here. So if you saw uh, my uh, last video, one of my last, the last episode that I did, it was family time with my niece Matilda. And one of her last beads had a whole bunch of twisted cane on it. And I was inspired by her choice of 
decoration. So that's what I'm using here. That's why I decided to use some cane. And I'll just wrap as many different pieces of cane that I have around the bead. You can wrap them either way. You can wrap them up and down. Uh, you know, you can swirl them on. You can add a, interesting patterns. Whatever you want to do on this, as long as you are pretty much kind of adding the same amount of glass throughout the whole bead because you don't want one part to be larger than the rest when you go to heat this up and start pressing everything out again. And that's uh, what we're going to do right now. So I gently start with the bottom and then I work my way into the bead making sure that everything stays warm and hot but I'm really just focusing almost everything on one side even though I'm trying to heat everything up at once. If I heat every, everything up too much then uh, I'll run into problems. It'll round out and that's why I am continuously heating and shaping until the very end and I, I'm glad I sped this up for you guys. The heating and shaping on this bead just went on and on and on. So I tried to do my best to get through it as quickly as possible while not missing a beat, because I don't like it when you guys miss something. And all these presses that I do on the table, they're very, very gentle because I don't want to bend the mandrel. That's the worst thing you could do working in the middle. Pulling in the bottom, heating everything up, making it look really nice and shiny again, and then pressing it down and trying to get rid of the chill marks every time. And it is just a constant pressing and then reheating to make everything look good again. And so on that note, I did want to mention one thing. If you want a perfectly square bead, then run out and get one. Go find one on eBay. These beads, although they might be very, very close, it's not perfectly square. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not a machine. And that's the beauty of the glass. And that's a beautiful thing, you guys. There it is. We're done. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.